Hi, David and Tom Moore with Equity Advantage IRA Advantage uh, here again today going over some questions and answers and i um, so happy to have my brother here doing it with me today. So we've got a few questions to address with IRAs and uh, first one I'd like to ask you since I don't know the answer <laughs> is do I need a custodian for a self-directed IRA? Well, what do you think, Tom? Yes, you do. Uh, need, a, need a custodian for any IRA. Um, the custodian for a self-directed IRA is going to be different than, than your normal custodian. Uh, you cannot go to uh, the big stores like the Edward Jones, Charles Schwab, and, and have a truly self-directed IRA. They'll, they'll all have accounts that they, can, that they call self-directed, but really you're allowed to buy from a set menu of investments that they, uh, they have put together for you. Um, self-directed custodian will allow you to to buy into any asset that's allowed in an IRA. So really, a self-directed IRA is it's something like we we like to say it's not a legally defined term. It's just a term that describes an account that allows you to do what you want to do. So if we look at you know the question on on the custodial deal, as as you said, any any custo any IRA requires a custodian, yeah. and, and we're just if we look at the most basic sense, we're just going to be moving that IRA account from a custodian. It won't allow you to do what you want to one that does. So, exactly. you know, once again, it's yeah. not a legally defined term. It's just a term that describes an account that allows you to do what you want to do. And, and so when we're looking at that, that, that question of self-directed, it's really, it's something that we have to wrestle with all the time because it's not, it's not something that's the, the definition of is, is universally agreed to. I mean, they've got a different yeah. definition of it. I mean, our definition of self-directed is an account that truly allows you to make any investment the law allows, mm -hmm. where a lot of other people's definition of a truly self-directed IRA is. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, because we have people that come to us all the time and they'll say, I've got a, a uh, self-directed IRA at such and such company. And we know right off going into it, we'll find out well, who's your custodian. No, it's not truly self-directed because they will not allow you to buy real estate or they will not allow you to buy notes or anything like that. It's, it really is an account that, that they term self-directed, but they are, have a very limited uh, um, inventory of stocks and bonds and mutual funds that they'll allow you to buy into. It's just you are the one that can make that call. So when we look at this stuff, I mean, uh, I think you and I are the same page with it. If, if we look at whether we're talking IRAs or 401k plans, if we're talking IRAs, the restrictions that somebody has had to deal with are not typically by law. It's just by the policies of that particular company. Or if we're yep. talking about a 401k plan, those restrictions, once again, are not by law or, you know, by law per, you know, what you can and can't buy with a 401k. It's, it's what that plan document actually allows you to do. Yeah. So if we're talking about 401k plan, we can change that plan or amend, amend the plan or change the plan, replace the plan, depending on what's happening if, if somebody wants to do those things. Correct. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. yeah. And then the other thing with, the, with these accounts, when you've got your IRA at a self-directed custodian, versus a quote unquote traditional custodian, uh, you, you still, it, it's an IRA account, whether it's here or there, and, and you still have the same contribution limits uh, for your traditional accounts, your SEP accounts, your simple accounts, uh, Roth accounts. They're all available at the self-directed custodian. Uh, and they all have the same contribution limitations. Uh, you're, you're dealing with uh, required minimum distributions the same way you normally would. You just have the ability now to invest in what you know. So, so I think you know one of the things that, that, that Tom would definitely echo is is that that if we're looking at these accounts and looking at what they can and can't do, it's just there's so much uh, misunderstanding or misinformation about these things, and, and really the laws never change with what you can and can't do. Since the mid '70s, when these yeah. things were started, you've always been able to self-direct and go buy. If it's real estate, you want to do that, or notes, or whatever it might be. It's always been that way. It's just a well-kept yeah. secret. The laws already, the, the law has always allowed it. It's just whether or not your custodian allows it. Uh, or plan provider. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Tom, for being with us thank again you. today. And uh, once again, Dave and Tom Moore, Equity Advantage, IRA Advantage, and uh, look forward to speaking soon. Bye. All right.